By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to install a pre-1980 BMW Airhead clutch assembly within your engine, so stick around until the end to see all the details. After 50 years and a fresh engine rebuild, I believe it's time to replace the old clutch assembly with a new assembly. Let's have a look at these parts first. This right here, down below, is the pressure plate. You'll see it's heavily worn and grooved. And then this right here is the clutch plate. Uh, this rides between the pressure plate and the front cover plate. And this should be actually six millimeters thick. Right now at the moment it's four millimeters, which is under spec. And then this right here is the cover plate. And it's just as worn, if not even worse, than the pressure plate. So this whole assembly will be replaced with an upgraded assembly that you can pick up at EME. I'll have a link down below in the description. This consists of four brand new parts. On the far left, we have a brand new pressure plate. You'll see the condition is very nice compared to the old pressure plate. And then over here in the middle, you'll see a brand new clutch plate. This is six millimeters thick, so it is to spec. On the far right, you'll see the cover plate and then down below the spring diaphragm. Now all these parts come within the kit along with six brand new bolts that will hold this whole assembly to the flywheel. Some of these early models actually had flatheads. So if you guys still have those on there, you might want to replace them with these Allen head bolts. And then on the back, you'll see they are countersunk because they will be positioned within the cover plate and this will be centered to the flywheel. After revealing all these brand new parts with you, it's time for the assembly process and along the way, I'll share some tips with you. First, I'll wear nitrile gloves to clean all clutch assembly parts using brake cleaner and a regular shop towel. The purpose of this cleaning is to remove the anti-corrosion coating applied to the parts before shipping, ensuring proper functionality. After cleaning, we'll check the clutch spring diaphragm height with a depth gauge, aiming for 17.5 millimeters plus minus half a millimeter. The measurement shows exactly 18 millimeters within the acceptable range indicating the spring's longevity. This can also be checked with a vernier caliper if needed. Next, we'll confirm the clutch disc thickness with a vernier caliper, reading just under 6 millimeters. It's crucial to measure in multiple spots to ensure uniform thickness following the factory specifications. To start the assembly, I'll wipe the fiber disc ensuring no high spots. Placing the bottom end of the clutch disc onto the pressure plate, I'll use a 3D printed clutch alignment tool to align it to the pressure plate's center. Then I'll position the front cover downwards, aligning the holes with the pressure plate. To secure the assembly, I will temporarily place two bolts through the parts. Before installation, apply a thin layer of high temperature grease of your liking on the outer diameter of the spring diaphragm and its fingers. This ensures the parts have a small amount of lubrication, but not enough to collect large amounts of clutch dust. For assembly assistance, three M8 by one by 30 millimeter long bolts will compress the assembly towards the flywheel before installing Allen head bolts. Holding the diaphragm against the flywheel, I'll push the assembly against it, aligning the bolts with the flywheel bores. Thread in the M8 bolts halfway before adding three Allen head bolts into the flywheel for extra security. Once the M8 bolts are bottomed out, hand tighten the Allen head bolts. Remove the M8 bolts and install three additional Allen head bolts. With all six bolts in place, use a torque wrench set to 16 foot pounds or approximately 21 and a half Newton meters. To prevent the flywheel from rotating during torquing, block it using a rubber pad and a small pry bar engaging on the ring gear. During the tightening and torquing process, you want to make sure the clutch disc stays centered to the clutch pressure plate at all times. Once you torque down all six bolts to the flywheel and remove your centering mandrel, you're pretty much done with this clutch assembly. Now this took me only around five to 10 minutes. It was really, really easy because all parts were brand new and everything was in pristine condition. Now you can do this within the frame. It might take you a little bit longer because you have to remove the transmission and some other components to get to the clutch. But once you're working on the clutch, it shouldn't really take you that long. Now this was one of my shorter videos and I didn't go into full detail on this clutch assembly because it was really simple. If you guys would like to watch a detailed video, you guys can click right here up above where I showcase the full engine rebuild. If you guys would also like to support me, hit the like button down below, subscribe if you haven't already for more BMW Airhead content, and please leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions about this clutch assembly or about anything else regarding this BMW. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one.